y'all, it's Brady. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are brand new here, hi, hello, welcome. I am so glad to have you here. I am participating in today's video. I am participating in Fallon from Moss Family TV's Fall Food Friday collab for the year of 2020. We are doing it every Friday this month in September. And today is the first episode that I am participating in. And so in today's video, I'm gonna share with you a recipe that I found on Pinterest for, uh, well, both of these I found on Pinterest. Neither of these are my recipes, but it's me cooking it and my take on them. But um, I found a recipe for a no need Dutch oven rosemary garlic bread that was to die for. Um, it is delicious and it turned out perfectly and it was so, so easy. So I'm gonna take you through how to do that and show you just how simple that really is. And also I am gonna share with you a loaded baked potato soup recipe that I also found on Pinterest. Both of those recipes are linked in the description box down below. Um, if you are brand new here and you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you are new to our channel and would like to stick around. We would love to have you. A little bit about me, I share grocery hauls, meal plans, um, cook with me videos, freezer cooking. We like to do really big Sam's Club hauls several times a year, so I always share those. And then weekly, I share just our weekly grocery haul. I try to share like dinner diaries, which is my take on what's for dinner. And I just kind of bring you along and either show you what we had or show you a little bit of how to make that. And I like to, you see this pantry down by, or back behind me. I like to keep that thing pretty stocked full. So I show you how that works. And from time to time, I'll give you a pantry tour and all that good stuff. So if grocery hauls and cooking videos are up your alley, hit that subscribe button and stick around because we would love to have you. If you are brand new from Fallon's channel or from just this playlist in general, because there are lots of other wonderful ladies participating, if you are brand new from one of the other channels um, in this playlist or just new in general, let me know down in the comments down below that you are new. Introduce yourself and let me know if you're coming from one of their channels, where you're coming from. And um, yeah, so let's get into this. Oh, before we get into the cooking, I also want to say to my subscribers, if you don't know who Fallon is from Moss Family TV, or if you, would, if you do know who she is, but you wanna also see some other videos, from some wonderful ladies for Fall Food Friday. The Fall Food Friday playlist will be linked down below. As soon as Fallon gets it up, I will also link it down below for you. And then it will come up at the end of the video as well so that you can come along and check out a bunch of other wonderful recipes too. I always get such wonderful inspiration from Fall Food Fridays and I am so excited. So Fallon, Thank you again for hosting this open collab, and I am so happy to be participating. So let's jump right into it. I'm gonna take you in to the night before and uh, show you how I set up for this no need bread. So simple, so easy, you're gonna love it. Let's go. Okay, so this is the night before. We're gonna get started with our bread. You do need to let this rise for at least 12 hours. I gave this a good 18 to 20 hours, and it was perfect. So the exact specifications for um, sizes or what is it? What am I thinking of y'all? I don't know <laughs> the exact measurements. There's the word measurements will be in the uh, link down below for this recipe where I got it. Um, and so you'll be able to see all of that, but this is three cups of all purpose flour. I'm being somewhat exact. I am leveling off the measuring cups, but you know, that's about as exact as I get around here. And that's why this recipe works so well for me. I cannot rave about this enough. So I'm putting in the salt, then the yeast, and now you are seeing the rosemary. Uh, the recipe calls for fresh rosemary, but also said that you could use dried. So that's what I'm using here too. And then I'm just gonna whisk this together. The recipe did not say that you needed to do this. It said you could literally just dump all this in the bowl, including the garlic, and then dump in your water, stir it up, cover it, and be done. But I wanted to just kind of aerate my flour and incorporate the salt, yeast, and um, 
rosemary before I began mixing in our water and garlic. So that's just kind of what I'm doing here with a whisk. Like I said, you could use a spoon or it's not really even necessary according to the recipe. It says three to four cloves of garlic if I remember correctly. And yeah, I'm using my minced garlic from Sam's, that big old jug of Members Mark minced garlic. And then I'm just gonna use my whisk here again and just kind of mix in those minced pieces of garlic. When I say this bread was a winner, I cannot say enough good things about this recipe. Um, so definitely go down in the description box and click that link because like I said, this is not my recipe. This is from a blog that I found online um, when I started out on Pinterest, but it was amazing. So then here is the water going in and I can't remember now what the exact measurements were. Um, but I did end up needing to add just a little bit more. You'll see that in a moment. But now I'm just going to use my big wooden spoon and just kind of fold this in on itself and then begin to really mix it. Um, you, This does not take very long. This took me maybe a minute and a half to mix this up. Um, it was not, not time intensive at all. I literally threw this together um, in five minutes or so right before I went to bed. Um, about eight, well, you know, it was like an hour before I went to bed, but it was like at about eight 30 or nine o'clock. I just mixed this all up, covered it and left it on my stove and it was good to go. So you're seeing here that I can't quite get that last little bit of flour mixture to mix in. So I'm going to add just a touch. And I mean a touch that was probably two more tablespoons of hot water to this. And, uh, then we were in good shape because it is a very sticky dough but you just want it to kind of come together like that it's going to look sticky and shaggy and that is totally fine the one thing to note is that the recipe does call for hot water you want that to activate your yeast from my understanding um, and you don't want it to be too hot or too cold goldilocks water okay my rule of thumb with this that i have found to be successful so far and again saran wrap we're going to let this sit overnight but the thing that I have found most successful for me is that the water needs to be uh, a, so hot that I, from just from the tap, that I don't really want to keep my finger in it very long because it begins to burn, but not to where it, you don't want to boil the water either. So I think it's somewhere around 120 degrees. Don't quote me. Just look at the recipe. Okay. All right. So there's that. This is the next day. This is about 3.30 in the afternoon, I think somewhere around there i've chopped up the six slices of bacon it calls for and then we're just going to cook this up in our pot again um this is a dutch oven recipe for the um bread so i didn't have my dutch oven available to do this for the soup so normally that's how i'd like to cook my soups so if you're not making the bread to go along with this i highly 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 recommend using a dutch oven it's just so awesome but okay, so here's a look at the bread after it rose for about 18 hours. It did double in size and it has lots and lots of air bubbles. It is so fragrant. It smells wonderful. Now, real life, I chopped up my potatoes so you can kind of see those off to the side up there. And yes, that is an M&M Halloween jar uh, that I got from Sam's holding up that plate so that those are ready to go because hello, hashtag small kitchen. Okay, so... Um, everything's a mess. I've got my sweet tea from Sonic there, but who cares? Um, my hands are very, very clean. That's what you definitely want to start out with. If you want to, you can put this right on your counter. I just already had the board, the cutting board out from chopping up those potatoes. So it is what it is. But this bread recipe, literally when it says no need, it means it. I am being super gentle here, barely just folding it in on each other itself with some flour because it is very, very sticky. And um, I'm just gonna kind of shape it into a ball, tuck it under, and then throw it on the parchment paper. And we are gonna put it in our preheated Dutch oven, ready to go. So um, check the recipe for sure, but I believe it was 450 degrees. Put your Dutch oven in there and then let the Dutch oven preheat itself at 450 for 30 minutes and then you will pull it out just like I've got here. I don't know if you can see the steam coming off, but that thing was hot. <laughs> um, so be very, very careful. And then you're gonna put the parchment and the dough right on in there. 
So then you really don't even have to clean your Dutch oven. It's fantastic. <laughs> so um, it's very easy here. Just a couple of steps. And if you are new to my channel, you will know that I am no expert baker. Bread is not my strong suit. So the fact that this bread came out so incredibly delicious and perfect and was so simple, that's a miracle in and of itself. Okay, so while that is cooking, we are gonna hop over here back to our bacon. It is about done. And then I'm just gonna pull that out onto a bowl with a paper towel in it. And um, that way we leave the fat in the pot, but take the bacon out so that it does not burn in this process. So it was six slices of bacon chopped up, cooked for a few minutes, which basically was just the amount of time to get that bread going. And while the bread is cooking, I'm going to pull this bacon out and then we will start with the butter and um, onions and garlic and all of that good stuff and start putting together this soup. So I really have to, I cannot brag on this uh, bread recipe enough. Like y'all, I'm serious. Go to the description box down below, check it out. There's also a link for my favorite Dutch oven down there too. Y'all, it is so simple. So I have three tablespoons of butter and it calls for one, and I'm splashing it everywhere. Um, it calls for, and I actually um, decided to just do that butter and then we'll add in the rest of the onions in a moment. But um, I thought the butter was softened, but it wasn't. But this soup, although easy in and of itself, just a lot of ingredients, um, well, not a lot, but you know, it's mainly the hardest part of this soup was chopping up the potatoes, if you can even call that difficult. All right, butter is melted. We left the fat from the bacon in there. I did not say this was low fat or healthy, uh, but it is scrumptious. So now I'm adding in an onion. I only used half of a medium yellow onion, but the recipe does call for an entire onion. If you don't like onion, you could leave it out. If you have people that are going to want to pick around it, which generally happens here but because we pureed most of it and i chopped my onion extremely small and i only used half an onion it was not a big deal here but you could certainly use onion powder um you know whatever so you're going to want to let this cook until these onions are tender took about five minutes you just want to keep stirring them around on uh, low to medium heat now we're going to add in our flour uh, side note, you're going to see me add here in just one second, and that's the recipe in my hand, the garlic. Um, this does call for several tablespoons or uh, cloves of minced garlic, and you're supposed to let that in there, cook a few minutes till fragrant, and then add your flour. Yeah, I didn't do that. I uh, <laughs> dumped in that flour and was like, oh shoot, some garlic's got to go in here. So it turned out just fine though. Nobody noticed. And uh, yeah, I just kind of let that bubble in the fat before I stirred it up for a moment. And then, you know, while the flour taste was cooking out, the garlic was able to kind of do its thing and become super fragrant. So it worked out just fine. So, you know, it's your kitchen. You do what you want to do. Hopefully, uh, maybe you'll be better about reading the recipe than I was. I don't know. Did it really matter? So yeah, and if you don't have minced garlic, or like I said, you didn't want to put the onion in, you could certainly use onion and garlic powder. I think that would be just fine. But I really enjoyed the roux that this made and um, all the depth of flavor from all the things that are called for in this recipe. I did find some other recipes that called for like, you know, just cream of chicken or something like that in there. But I think this was much, much better. So the recipe calls for, I believe, two and a half pounds don't quote me. Again, check the description box for that recipe. But um, of potatoes, she said that you should, the recipe called to peel those potatoes and then dice them. No, mama just left those peels right on there with these little tender baby potatoes and it was totally fine. So I am adding in the four cups of chicken broth. This is just the reduced sodium, you know, store-bought chicken broth. But if you've got your own, that would be fantastic. If you didn't want to use chicken, I'm sure that you could use vegetable broth um, and that that would be just fine too. And then in goes the milk. I believe this was two cups of milk. I am using whole milk here, but I think any milk would be fine. Um, 
you know, I think the whole milk definitely added to the creaminess as well. And then in with the heavy whipping cream. Again, y'all, I did not say low fat. I did not say that this was going to be some, you know, super like, I don't know, weight watchers or weight friendly or, you know, diet friendly meal. No, mm -mm. no, but it is definitely a great fall recipe and it is super, super delicious. So both of these recipes, the no need bread recipe and the potato soup recipe are down in the description box below. Make sure you check those out. And again, if you're wanting a Dutch oven, I have a very inexpensive one linked down below. It is the one that I use. I purchased mine from Sam's Club, but I also found one on Amazon. It's the same brand. Um, I think it's literally the same size and everything. So I think you should totally try it out if you are looking for one because I have looked at some of the bigger brands and I just couldn't bring myself to pay that for it. But the Dutch oven that I'm using has turned out great. All right, so here is 30 minutes um, with the bread in the Dutch oven with the lid on, um, on 450. We're waiting on those potatoes and the soup mixture to come to a boil. Now we're gonna leave the lid off, throw it back in for another 15 minutes, and there is what it came out looking like, and it is nice and crispy. Okay, so while the bread cools on a cooling rack, we now have bubbly soup that we brought to a boil, and then we put the lid on it and turn the heat down to low, and we let it simmer for about 10 to 12 minutes. And now that the potatoes are nice and soft, and ready to go. It does call for putting half of the mixture or so into a blender or food processor. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. Now, if I'd have had more time, you, I would have definitely pureed all of this mixture, but I did not. And I kind of liked that I didn't um, because it turned out really delicious to have the texture of the pureed soup. Um, it was already nice and creamy as it is, so you could definitely skip this step. But if you want this, um, it was very nice to have some soft chunks of potato along with the pureed mixture in it. And so it was just very appealing texture wise as well as flavor. I think there's a lot of depth of flavor here and it was really, really good. It was definitely a hit. My parents were over this evening, so they took a bowl home with them because they weren't able to stay for dinner. But I was like, Y'all have to at least stay till this soup is done and take some with you. So they definitely did that. They loved it. My husband loved it. It was a hit. So here's my little ninja bullet blender thing. And uh, never mind that burn spot that was there on this countertop when we moved in. Uh, hello, we need to update the countertops. But they're working, so I'm good with it. This is a real life kitchen, don't you know? Okay, so I am just going to pulse this until it is pureed. Like I said, I would have, I was thinking in my head, okay, I'm going to go ahead and puree all of this, but it would have taken many, many, you know, two or three different times of spooning out the mixture into this and then pouring back in and all of that. So I just did the one, you know, about half of the soup and, um, it was totally fine. Like I said, the texture was actually really nice and I totally understand why the recipe calls for only doing half of it. So I'm going to take my little blender attachment thingy blades out of here and what you missed on this because you know I just didn't want to film myself and the uh, <laughs> words that came out <laughs> but I dropped that entire thing and slung that I dropped that blade onto the floor just about hit my foot so then I panicked so then words flew out of my mouth plus potato soup went all over the kitchen floor that's real life okay so but I spared you from seeing all that drama. Just gonna tell you about it. We have dumped this in here. I'm gonna pull my ladle out and just stir this with my large wooden spoon. That's like probably one of my favorite, favorite kitchen tools. So I'm just gonna keep our ladle off to the side here and we will use that for serving. But now our soup is done. So yeah, it's just, you know, some salt, some pepper, and our pureed mixture here and we are ready to go i'm also going to add in i think it was two-thirds of a cup of sour cream it calls to throw in at the end as well as your reserved bacon pieces so we'll get that all incorporated and then we will throw in our bacon bits here 
and um, you know like I said if you just wanted a plain potato soup I'm sure that you could have just used a little more butter and left out the bacon altogether or you could use bacon bits at this step and have just done butter whatever works for you but I follow the recipe almost to a T um, and it was really really good so I have a tr I have trouble sticking with recipes but I thought this one was pretty straightforward and it was really, really delicious. So there's a look at all of that. And then I'm gonna show you how I plated it up. Well, I took a Pyrex bowl, one of my large ones, I think it's like an eight cup, and um, fixed up my parents a bowl to take home with them. And this was not even quite half of the soup. This made a lot. This easily could feed, eat eight people. Um, with some leftovers this was really really good so i'm just going to add some shredded cheese you could shred your own here or um you know do like i did and bought i just used store-bought i'm also using some store-bought bacon bits because i didn't fry up enough at the time to put it on the top so we're good um, and then i'm just going to take some of my green onions that i was trying to salvage here we had a few that were still hanging on so I chopped those up, and if you have never cut your green onions or chives with scissors, oh my goodness, it will change the whole game of chopping up herbs or green onions, things like that. Super, super simple, and that is a look at it. You could also throw some sour cream on top, but that is it. So thank y'all so much. Here's a look at that bread. Look at that deliciousness. Y'all, this bread was just perfect so was the soup we really enjoyed it we will definitely be making these recipes again thank y'all so much for sticking till the end i am so glad i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give me a thumbs up i would love to have you subscribe if you are new and i will see you in the next video Bye bye